Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new hardware unboxing today with a keyboard that sent to us by the people at Gamdias. This is the Gamdias Hermes P1 RGB mechanical gaming keyboard as you can probably see written right here on the top though it's upside down so you can actually see it. it's written right here too as well. This is a keyboard that has 72 kilobytes of built-in memory, 1000 hertz polling rate, two programmable keys and a backlight that can go through 16.8 million colors plus many many other features written right here on the back and you're not sure if you can see it because it's in 720p right now and this camera can't actually capture anything because it's kind of horrible so oh it was written on the front as well i'm not exactly sure exactly exactly what kind of keys this keyboard actually uses so I'm probably gonna misidentify them again until I actually pull it, uh, pull the um, the keys off. Also, this thing has a uh, aluminum ba aluminum faceplate, so uh, it will have some rigidity to it. Not sure if it's gonna be as heavy as the uh, I just hit the, the microphone by nose, as the um, the uh, have it one, which is still a very very heavy keyboard. You can probably see it a bit in the background. It's glowing yellow right now. So let's open this up and see exactly how this keyboard looks. It does come with a detachable uh, wrist rest. This one from Habit uh, has it. <laughs> Habit has it, yeah. That's always fun. It, it, it's got a wrist, re wrist rest that is uh, bolted on and you can't remove it. Okay, let's take this apart. Slowly lift up the lid. Hopefully. No, I did not do it right. Did I? I did not do it right. I have to open this first. Hopefully it will work. Trying to not completely destroy the box. Ah, voila, voila, voila. And I turned it kind of in the wrong direction. So I'm going to turn it this way so maybe you can actually see what's inside. First of all, we have a very, very big, um, well, manual in multiple languages, which tell you what the key combinations are for the uh, various commands that this keyboard is capable of. You kind of have, well, they remind me a bit of the ones from Habit. Like it has similar functions where you can lock uh, the Windows key, you can lock, you can switch WSD and arrows, which I believe this one can too, or the R1 could. One of them could, I, I, knew, I know I reviewed one that could do it as well. First thing to note, this is a braided cable, again with a gold plated USB connector. Hoping it actually picks up the color, at least if it doesn't focus. And we'll take it. I'm gonna take it out of the box slowly. Should probably take it up in the different direction, but hey, this works too. And the oh yeah, the wrist rest. This is a very important thing. The last keyboard I reviewed with a detachable wrist rest was the um, the Natic Genesis, I believe, one. And because that one was a review sample, the wrist rest looked like it was. A biohazard this one looks clean okay so i'm probably actually gonna connect it to the keyboard so i'm gonna actually test the keyboard with the wrist rest this time it probably won't be a safety hazard let's take the foam off and the little wrapping bag thing and voila hoping oh yeah voila Got it turned off, turned the wrong way around. I'm gonna move these to the side so they won't get in the way of this review. Should probably also plug in the microphone. Okay, I'm gonna turn it towards you so you can see it better. Voila. This is the Hermes P1. This is the keyboard in all its glory. Uh, something I always complain about is if you're gonna make a mechanical keyboard, a high endish keyboard, add a somewhere around here add a physical knob, dial, something for the volume or buttons at least, because I absolutely hate using function and the F keys. Thankfully, the um, the volume, well, it, well th th this keyboard doesn't actually use the function key on uh, this bit. It has it on this bit, like on the other end. So uh, yeah, I guess you could use it, well, can sort of use it with one hand. It's still not as comfortable as, you know, if they put the FN here, they could have had the volume settings here. You know, so it's one hand easy reach because currently, yeah, it's still kind of a stretch and kind of uncomfortable, sadly. 
the keys feel like they're browns a bit. Um, gonna press them again more thoroughly to see exactly. On the back we have rubberized feet. There's rubber on the feet. You can actually see the rubber hopefully. Yeah, there's rubber on those feet. Oh, it's got a um, mechanism that lets you actually um, route the cable. And there's this thing which I'm... There's this thing. There's a thing here. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna have to check the manual maybe. Maybe it's a thing that's important. I don't know. I haven't tested the thing before. Okay, so let's set this up. Okay. Let me actually check my other keyboard first to make sure. But I think these may not be browns. No, no. They, they feel pretty much just like browns. I think this may be browns. Well, but... Uh, they didn't say that it came with a... Uh, well, there should be a detachable, uh, detachable thingy in the box. I think I may have lost it. I'm going to have to look for it. But I did have one around here. So I'm going to see... Oh, yeah. Pardon. I, I have a lot of lamps around here. So I knocked one over. But I am currently going to detach one of the keys and see exactly what's inside. Yep, it's a brown box. It's a brown key. And it's a... Uh, let me see carefully. I'm gonna need some glasses soon. It's TTC, so it's the same kind of keys that the uh, Rokat uh, keyboard had. The same kind of uh, keys, the brown ones. As I remember right, the TTC um, keys were somewhat better than the uh, the um, the Kale ones because they work by default and didn't have problems, didn't have issues with them constantly failing by the way as i've said in the um the review of the um what was it the uh, the Natick genesis one failure does occur over time on the uh the kale brown switches like the s key tends to press itself multiple times by itself uh, from time to time it's it's getting annoying but this one may not have the same issue because again it doesn't use kale brown switches i i'm still a very very big supporter of avoiding kale brown switches Typing on it feels fine. In terms of dimensions, it's your standard affair as a keyboard. It's not uh, too big, not too small. In terms of weight, still lighter than the Habit one. I still don't know what's inside that thing to make it so heavy. Maybe there's a new, there's an entirely different set of keys that are not kale ones. So uh, maybe that will explain the um the weight let's see how we attach this thing. oh yeah there's these two holes here i'm guessing that's how we attach it hopefully huh? yeah th that looks like the way to attach it okay i got one in should i get the other one in hopefully maybe who knows voila it's very very low angle yeah it feels nice uh, the angle of the uh, the wrist press is a bit lower than the Haver one does, and it's a bit longer too. It feels okay to the touch. Like the keys feel fine. No issue with them currently. Yeah, they feel okay. So let's actually turn this thing on and uh, turn off the light. Because it probably has a very, very nice light show. I'm gonna turn it towards you and maybe put something under the uh, keyboard so you can actually see it better. See the lights better. I'm guessing this would be nice. Uh, what do I have to put? Oh yeah, my wallet. It's empty, so don't worry. No money was made, was harmed, <laughs> made or harmed in the making of this video. YouTube is not doing well in terms of monetization, is it? It's doing so badly. Oh my God, I'm glad I have a day job. Let's put this thing in and hope for the best. Voila, it's lighting up. Hopefully at least one keyboard, one keyboard, one camera can pick it up. I can't turn off the light because it's really far away, but uh, let's see if I can somehow increase the lighting efficiency. Where's the... Uh, well, let's actually change lighting modes. Yeah, we detected it. It's cycling lights. They're not very bright. Maybe I can use this to brighten them up a bit. Did it help? No, this change. Oh, this changes their direction. Nice. Okay, let's try this mode. How do I change their color? Okay, this is the RGB mode. Again, sorry because of the 
there is more light coming from the roof that I can actually manage. Maybe I can... Uh, I'm gonna try and put a shade on it. Yeah, I can probably see it a bit better now. You can also see the uh, uh, Hebe M1 um, um, headset from Gamidas, which I'm gonna, re I'm gonna unbox next in the following show. Let's try more configurations. Fan. This back. This. It's got all the modes. Also, it has these uh, things that let you change all stuff. I believe this is a macro recorder because it did say that it had macro capabilities just like the um, the Habit one. Oh, one thing. The... Um, the the LEDs for Numlock capsule and stuff are really, really small and red. But still, they beam out like quite a lot. Like, you can see my fingers turning red a bit. I'm gonna try and see if I can move the thing closer to camera. But yeah, it doesn't really show that well on... Oh, and the thing fell off. But I, I'm gonna put it back later on. So let's try and uh, cycle through a few more lighting modes. I'm imagining that this Night Rider style thing can be customized with different colors. If not, that's kind of a shame. I'm not exactly sure what these do. Because it's turned it on and I can actually see them. This is the constantly on mode. This is the RGB mode. But yeah, I'm guessing that these uh, change the... Uh... Oh, we have profiles too. We have diff... Oh yeah, these are the different profiles. Can change them in various ways. This is the afterglow, this is the scrolling, this is the faster scrolling, even faster scrolling, and the ripple effect, and the random RGB populating the keyboard. Nice effects, gotta say. They're they're not great, like I still don't know all of them, so I'm gonna see exactly how many it has in the review. This look this this actually looks nice. It's like a Christmas tree. You can probably hang it up in your Christmas tree. Though again, because it has uh, a black matte, well not, it has a grayish black uh, underpinning and black keycaps, it doesn't really enhance the light like the uh, the white variant of the Habit one uh, does, the one I sent Raul. But yeah, it's, it, still looks, it still looks nice. I'm gonna have a review for it in August, I believe, hopefully. That's when you're gonna see it on the channel. But if I still have it uh, plugged in, let me do a few tests here. Okay, currently no keys seem to be actually trying to press themselves without being wanted. And I hit the microphone with my nose again. Sorry about that, I have a very big nose. I'm actually proud of it. So there is no point in insulting my nose, like some people do. Yeah, it certainly seems to work fine. Yeah, so the keys work, unlike kale switches, which is good, because they're not kale switches. So I'm going to be back with a full review of this thing somewhere around August, and I'm going to have a new unboxing of the P1, no, the, the M1 Hebe um, gaming headset soon. Till then, check out our shows, check out our videos, our pretty much everything we do on the channel. We have, uh, we don't have reviews anymore, I, I only do, well, game reviews. I only do game reviews when I'm forced to by contract because they take a long time to do and after Mankind Divided I just lost hope. But yeah, um, expect to see more content basically every day because that's what I do. Well, apart from Monday because Raul got lazy and stopped doing the uh, the upcoming games videos on account of oh there's too many games on Steam right now it's an apocalypse I can't possibly humanly sanely make a show about it. Well, yeah, that's kind of right, but still, he, he could he could do the insane thing and do it. Well, gonna see you again soon with more stuff. Goodbye.